Hey everyone, Guppy Girl here, and I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone in the Facebook group called Nano Aquariums. It's there that I posted a small clip of my fallen pot tank um, late in 2021, and it just blew up with so many positive things and feedback, and it was just great to see how many people were inspired by my tank. Thank you to all of you guys. You've given me the courage to make a YouTube video and then to just basically restart my whole YouTube channel. So thank you guys. Here's the specifics on how I made this tank. If you want to recreate something similar or as close to this as possible, these are the items I use. The tank I got a second hand from a hobbyist who was basically just clearing out some old tanks they had. So there are like a few scratches on mine. For me, I barely noticed them. But uh, yeah, this was my very first cubed tank. So I was like really excited. I found that the tank actually belongs to this Aquion Springs kit. It's an 8.8 .8 gallon. And uh, the dimensions of the tank is it's a cube. So each side is 13 and a quarter inches. If you want to look for something similar to that. I used two types of substrate. Uh, most of the stuff I had already on hand, except for this ADA Aqua Soil. Um, I bought this specifically for the tank because I knew I wanted to have a lot of stem plants and plants with roots. Uh, before this, I had only had pretty much mostly rhizome plants uh, like Anubias and Java Fern. And the stem plants I did have were kind of like a hit or miss. Sometimes they survived, sometimes they didn't. So I knew for certain I wanted, you know, a nutrient rich substrate for my stem plants going into this tank. I topped it off with pool filter sand. Now, uh, I'd heard this kind of going around that pool filter sand has like silica, which attracts diatom algae, which is like that brown, like it just makes your sand looks like brown at the very top layer. Um, I really haven't noticed that much of a problem. Uh, I did see it like patches of, you know, the brown algae at the top at the very beginning of like starting up the tank. But um, since I've planted everything, I really don't notice it uh, too much. Although it's definitely not like pure white color, which was like originally what it looked like. I'm fine with it. Uh, if you don't want to deal or possibly deal with this issue, because I can't say if this would happen to your tank or not, you could just use normal like white sand from, you know, anything not pool filter sand basically. So for filtration for this tank, I use a very basic hang on the back filter. I knew for certain I wanted to use a hang on the back, um, not only because I had one already lying around, but second is for the flow. I'd been doing like some research and wanted to experiment a little bit with flow because I use mostly sponge filters and basically my research kind of was pointing me to the direction of if you have less flow in your tanks then more algae collects and more detritus collects. Whether or not that's true, uh, I wanted to have flow just to experiment with that. I will say for certain that just observing this tank, there is um, a couple dead spots in the very back of the tank where you really can't see too well. The back of the tank, that's where it starts collecting a little more. So my poor Bulbitis, uh, it's a really slow growing rhizome plant, is collecting this cushion algae and cladaphora on the leaves, which has basically been the only maintenance um, I've been doing in the tank, uh, in terms of pulling out the algae that is. But I definitely recommend uh, doing your own research and experimenting yourself and observing uh, what works and what doesn't work in your own tank. Like I mentioned earlier, I really like hang on the back filters because you can customize them pretty easily. So these are the things I used in the filter. You can definitely use uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, for the intake, I wrap this Koi Pond filter pad around the intake with some uh, fishing line and basically every week I might have to change that maybe every two weeks because um, it's collecting all of the type detritus and particles floating in the water uh, so yeah that's just my mechanical filtration and also it's really good to have an intake especially when you have tiny little animals living in your tank like shrimp, guppy fry, 
coolie loaches, basically all those things in my tank can easily get sucked up by the intake if there isn't um, some kind of barrier to protect them. For the main back section of the hub filter, I also use this uh, koi pond filter pad. Now, uh, I don't recommend this actually because it's like a one-time use kind of thing. You can't easily rinse it out and like put it back in your tank uh, without it completely loosening its shape and flattening out. So then I would recommend this black filter pad because it has a really firm feel to it. So it's definitely reusable, easy to just kind of give it a squeeze to reduce some of the bacteria you have that might be clogging up the filter. And then, you know, you'd still have a bunch of bacteria still in the actual um, pad itself, easy to put back in, easy to cut. I really like this stuff, um, especially if you're doing a lot of like um, customization to your tank and filtration. I also use this black filter pad for attaching moss to. I'll kind of put a clip of that in there, but um, I basically just put some strands of moss um, kind of all going in the same direction, tie it with some fishing line, and then it's really easy uh, when you have this foam in the back to kind of wedge it and squish it into little crevices in your tank. So on to hardscape. This is where things can get really expensive um, depending if you already have the wood or not on hand. Um, the main wood that I used was Japanese maple tree branches. Now this is wood that I did collect from outside, but it was outside my house from my tree that had just been cut. So I held onto this wood for several years in my house, uh, waiting for it to fully dry out before putting it in my tanks. So it's been a really long awaited process of just holding onto this wood for years, but um, it can definitely save you money uh, collecting wood outside. Just be careful with what you collect, do your research of course. The second type of wood I used was spiderwood sticks. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think Aquarium Co-op sells these anymore, but um, I basically got like a big bag of spiderwood sticks. It used to be for $20. Um, I don't know if they'll still have it in the future or you might need to find this somewhere else. This is also a really good way to save money because you can take these uh, sticks and kind of tie them together with some fishing line and make uh, the shape you want. I also used Mopian wood, which I bought on Amazon on a Black Friday sale. They got me guys. Uh, you know, Black Friday, there's sales everywhere and you know, you you get roped into buying things that you don't necessarily always need. So now on to the main focal point of the tank, which is the big pot in the center. So I bought this off of Amazon. Um, unfortunately, the seller doesn't sell them anymore or doesn't have them in stock. Uh, I would definitely reach out to them if you're looking for this specific pot. Um, they came in a bit large set and a small set. I used a large set, which was the pot at the very front of the list. Um, it's that 6.5 inch one. And so my whole idea for the pot was that I wanted something that looked old and like like a really old uh, Roman pot or something, you know, maybe had little handles at the side. I got the pot because I wanted to have Kule Loaches be the focal point of this tank. And I know a lot of you are thinking, you know, Kule Loaches, they hide all the time, you'll never see them. That is partially true. I do see at least like three out and about most of the time if I just like spend like 30 seconds in front of the tank. So I got the pot for them to hang out in. Ironically, I never see like any in there. Like maybe you're only one or two times I actually have seen one poke its head out, which was super adorable. I'll try to post a video of that. Um, so I wish they all did that, but no, they don't, of course. They mostly all hang out in the roots of the bulbitis, which is really interesting. But uh, yeah, the pot was for them. They don't use it, you know, it's whatever. I still really like the pot and would keep it in there even if they don't use it um, as their main home. Last on the hardscape list is rocks. Now you really don't see any rocks um, in the tank except for just a few little um, medium sized ones in the front. And that's because most of the rocks I use in the pot. Um, I basically use it as filler and I thought like the large rocks would create, you know, some big 
uh, crevices in between them and then I topped it off with some smaller little um, little rocks on top. Uh, I thought the coolie loaches would really like that because it creates a lot of little spaces for them to hide in. For the lighting, I used this cheap uh, Night Crew clip-on light. Um, I believe uh, it's recommended for smaller tanks and I read some reviews, thought it would work. It actually was only enough to light the back portion of the tank. So um, I used the secondary light, which is a heat lamp. After filming all the footage of the tank, I actually stopped using the normal house lamp bulb for a little over a week now and I've seen a lot of improvement in the plants in the front. I was having an issue uh, mainly with the pearl weed and S repens and uh, dwarf hair grass in the front underneath the normal house light uh, bulb. Those are turning yellow, um, just the new growth was coming in really yellow. Yeah, after turning this light off, all of those plants, uh, the yellowing growth started turning darker and darker. For, I guess you can call them the chemicals that I use in this aquarium. Um, first, not sponsored by Seachem, they were just the brand that my local fish store had. Prime is your basic dechlorinizer. Then for the fertilizers, I use potassium, which is a macronutrient and Flourish Comprehensive Supplement, which is your micronutrients. Uh, using fertilizers really depends on the water chemistry of your tap water, if that's what you're um, putting into your tank. I was seeing little holes starting to pop up in mostly the Hydrocot uh, Tripartita and the S-Repens. So that's from potassium deficiency. After some research, I figured that out. They are pretty good if they get it every week, but if I skip a week or two, then they really start to gain more holes in the leaves. So that's why I use potassium. And then for the comprehensive supplement, uh, which is your trace minerals, uh, I figured that would just be a good thing to have because I have a lot of plants, but also a lot of uh, rhizome plants. So that's what I use. It will be different for everyone's tank and different depending on the plants you choose. I'm a beginner when it comes to using fertilizers. As a starting point, I dosed fertilizer according to the amount of water I was changing every week. So for this tank, I changed two gallons a week. And for that, um, I put two drops of flourish and six drops of potassium. Now this is just a starting point. Um, I'm definitely probably gonna tweak it later on in the future, but uh, as someone who has killed all their plants from overdosing fertilizers, I would definitely say you want to dose less rather than more and just tweak it from there. Now to the softscape, also known as the plants. Roll the montage.
thank you to everyone who's made it this far in the video. Um, here is what the tank looks like now. Um, after doing most of the editing, it took a while and then life. So the tank has evolved a little bit since the beginning of all of the footage, but it's mostly the same still. But uh, like every living thing in nature in general, things are always changing, so your tank will always be changing too. Although this is my first full-fledged aquascape that I planned out, uh, this is not my first tank ever. I just want to put that out there. Um, I've been in the hobby for about 12 years and I was mostly species, like uh, fish species uh, orientated and now I'm kind of shifting my gears towards aquascapes and recreating nature or my envision of nature in my head. I have a lot more ideas for aquascapes in the future so if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.